Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines. And this is I Am Life Church. This is a really nice day today, by the way. Ah, Lord. Thank you for today, God. Thank you for the beautiful sunlight. And there's no wind. <laughs> but if there was, we still appreciate it because you know what's best for the earth. We thank you for all you've done and you've created. We can never thank you enough or praise you or worship you enough. God, thank you for all you do and will continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen. It's always so hard for me when I come out here and I do these sermons or videos. Um, just want to kind of be a little bit more authentic. Which basically means I, uh, I don't really have a sermon planned out. <laughs> I felt like I did. There's so many different topics I kind of touch on. Sometimes I do the same thing over and over again. Um, it really is the same thing. It's, it's trying to lead people to Jesus. Not to anything else above everything else leading them to Jesus. That's my goal. That's, I believe, God's goal and the Holy Spirit's goal. It's very discouraging when, when, when you don't get positive feedback or no feedback can be discouraging. Um, even not getting the views. I'm like praying to God, like, Lord, I only have like of people watching my stuff. This takes quite a t some time to do this. But he told me those four people or even one person. I've had one one person. I was like, why am I going to upload this to fa uh, Facebook or through YouTube when there's only one person watching it? And it reminds me of me. <laughs> Jesus left 99 sheep, 99 sheep to went to find the one that went astray. And I think about myself and my life and <laughs> how Jesus saved me from myself. And he left 99 sheep that wouldn't leave to come find me and maybe you're that person watching that this maybe you're the person like me in that in this time looking for a reason to live to continue living looking for hope looking for meaning like why is my life so not good <coughs> That's what I was looking for. I look for that daily. Every day I still look for it. I've had some things in my life. I've, I've had some nice things. I've done some bad things. Someone asked me this question yesterday. They said, well, I know this person. And we just started talking about God. They don't have a relationship or know God or even believe in God, any God. They, they think that life is just by chance. So when this person sees people praising Jesus, they're like, I don't get it. That was just by chance that that happened. <clears throat> and rightfully so. We live in this world, as this person described it, and I agree. We see things differently. I don't want to go too far into that. I, I can only speak from my own experience. I had a personal experience meeting God. It was 
No one could see it. No one was aware of it except me. And he spoke to me. And for those of you who don't know, what he said to me was, why can't you just believe? Does everything need to make sense? It was like I, I was looking directly at him. He didn't look like anything I imagined him looking like. It didn't even matter what he looked like. What mattered was I knew that I knew that I knew in my heart, soul, mind, and spirit that this was God speaking to me. And in my mind, it was just so supernatural. I was like, this is God. There's, there's no other way to explain it. I haven't had that kind of intense encounter with him again, but I've had different intense encounters. I haven't had like a one-to-one -one, face to face talk with him, but I've had different supernatural things since I've been walking my faith out with him. Before I came out here, I, I was like, God, I want to preach something. I don't know what it is. And he said, look down. I'm reading through Psalms a lot. Um, I'm not going to tell you my goals or my plans because I know Satan and people and stuff like that. And they say when you tell people your goals and plans, they don't happen. So <laughs> I don't want to tell anyone anyways because I don't want to boast. And But I've got goals and I have plans. And I'm reading through Psalms right now. And one of the things that I see David in his character is he was a man after God's own heart. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I want to be a man after God's own heart. So I'm reading the Psalms. And one thing that David did was he was also kind of like a crybaby to me when I interpret how I'm, how I'm reading it. Anything that he needed, everything that he needed, anything that he was going through, everything that he was going through throughout his whole life. He didn't run to people. He didn't run to, you know, a pastor. He didn't run to his parents. He didn't run to anyone or anything in this world. And when I mean in this world, I mean in this world. He didn't run to money, possessions, or a woman, or whatever. He ran straight to God without hesitation. I mean, there is a verse that even says, even when my father and my mother abandon me, the Lord will take me in. And it's just this idea of maybe that's how you're feeling. Like I felt I was homeless and God took me in. Maybe you, you never felt ex loved by your parents or had any or loved by people or loved in general. <sighs> you always feel like you have to prove yourself to people, you know. This person said, I don't feel anything to me when we're talking about God and this person doesn't believe Maybe you don't feel anything. And you want to feel the presence of God. You want to feel loved. You want to have a purpose. Faith is a very touchy subject. It really is. I mean, it's hard to explain. And I kind of feel like I'm trying to explain to people to believe in God who created all this Right? One being, three and one, created all this. And when I mean three and one, for those of you who love theology so much, I mean, my name is Jeremy. I am a husband. I am someone's son. And I'm also a father. Three and one. They're, they're, they're one person. God is one. <clears throat> But there's areas in your heart 
that you don't feel accepted or you feel incomplete. And God wants to restore you. You know, he doesn't want you to not feel like you're good enough. He doesn't want you to not feel like you have peace. He doesn't want you to feel anything that isn't that is outside of being whole. When Adam and Eve sinned, they got cut off from that relationship with God. And that relationship was trusting him. They no longer trusted him. And God wants to restore that relationship. And he wants to restore it with all of us. Where do you run to when you need something? When you want something? Who do you depend on? Where do you seek comfort? Some people seek it in alcohol and drugs. Some people seek it in sex. Everyone worships something, whether it's their position at their job, right? Whether it's even how miserable they are, how, how life is so hard on them. You can even worship pity. Being a victim can be worshipped. I'm a victim. There are people who do that. And they call themselves believers as well. But that's still pride. If it's not Jesus, it's pride. One of the things I said yesterday to my wife was, not to her, like I was teaching her, but it was just we were having this conversation. And I, one of the things that we were talking about was something clicked in me. And it was like, the difference between a Pharisee, and for those of you who don't know much about religion, Pharisees are basically religious people. And religious people don't always go to church or believe in God. Religious people are, are simply very judgmental. Like I said, they don't even have to go to church. You could be a Pharisee and not even believe in God or go to church. What makes you a Pharisee is simply this. The difference between a real believer, someone who's saved, and someone who isn't, now listen closely, someone who's saved and someone who isn't is this one reason. The person who's saved, they're like David. They call out and cry to God for all of their problems, for everything they're going through, good, bad, ugly, worse, whatever. They lean and trust him and, and cry out to him through prayer. God, help me. I need you. You're everything. I can't do this without you. I have not enough strength. I have not enough wisdom. I, you are my strength. You are my wisdom. You are my righteousness. You are perfect. You are holy. You can save me from this. They run straight to God. And when God helps them, they glorify him and say, praise God, praise God. They actually say, praise Jesus. They say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're holy. You're amazing. Remember when Jesus walked in this world? That's what he did. He healed and helped people. And what did they do? Praise the son of God. Praise the son of, praise Jesus. They praised him. They praised him. Even the Old Testament says, God says, what actually pleases me isn't your burnt sacrifices. It's praise, thanking me, praising me, honoring me. That honors me more than any sacrifices that you give me, more than, more than anything that you could do for me. What honors me is you thanking me, you worshiping me. Other than that, I don't want to hear it. The Pharisees, they lean on, on theology and doctrine and philosophy and perspective because they have control over that. Therefore, they worship that. They will never say, you will never hear a religious person or a Pharisee or a very judgmental person, you'll never, ever hear them say, Praise Jesus. 
like a baby, like a child cries out. Someone said this to me, out of the mouth of babes, you'll hear the praise of God or something like that. So they're thinking literal children. God isn't saying you have to be a literal child. He says you have to be like a child to enter into the kingdom. Children run to their parents when they need something, whether it's protection or whether it's something. <laughs> and he says, unless you become like this child, all the prophets were this way. All the leaders, great leaders of faith in Israel, they were this way, Old Testament. David, Moses, all of them, the greats, Samson. They went to God for everything like a child. They cried for anything and everything. They found their salvation in God. They didn't find it in money, sex, drugs, alcohol, in their response, in their uh, jobs, in their identity, what this world says. Oh, you're a pastor. You're a preacher. Now, first thing, I ain't no pastor. I ain't no preacher. I'm just a follower of Jesus. I just follow Jesus. I say, I'm just telling you, I'm just sharing to you what God's done for me in my life. But you guys worship these things. You worship your job, your bank account. You check your bank account, make sure you're up on the, on the right and be like, oh man, if you don't have enough money, you start to worry. That's your God. That's what you worship. Some of you guys, you worship your theology. You worship doctrine. You know, you got the whole Bible memorized. You've got all the, everything, you know, you read every book in the world, right? And as soon as someone says something that you don't know, you do one or two things. I'm guessing you either deny that they're right or you'll feel bad because you'll go, man, it makes me feel stupid now. It has nothing to do with that. Jesus has nothing to do with that. See, we turn Jesus into a religion He's not, not a religion. He's greater than religion. He's a father who wants a relationship with his children. That's very simple. You know, we do the the bowing and all this stuff and the and the confessions and all this stuff. You know, sit in this booth and talk to some other man about your problems or person, you know. We turn, we turn God into this organized whatever. I'm not saying anything bad about organization. Or I love my house to be organized. But I don't want my kids to be organized. Does that make sense? Like I want my kids in my house. But I don't want them in my house feeling like they're walking on eggshells. And we treat God this way in his house. You know, oh, as soon as they walk into a church, you're like, oh, I'm on eggshells, crack. And then everyone looks at you like, you're totally evil. You're just so bad. Ooh. <laughs> waiting, to, waiting, the Pharisees wait. A Pharisee is an accuser. That's, an affair. That's a Pharisee. A religious person, a judgmental person, they're basically an accuser. They're waiting for someone to make a mistake. You ever seen that, The Simpsons? There's that kid that goes, ha, ha. that's what Jesus is referring to. Someone who's just waiting, waiting to tell on someone. Oh, uh, look at there. There you did. He did it. She did it. Look at them. They're not a, they're not pretty. They're not this. They're not that. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at everyone. Look at this. Look at their failures. Look at their mistake. Just don't look at mine. Do you do that? I, I've hung out with this person. We got along great. And then they found out that I was all like all about Jesus and stuff. They can be all about their sports. Woo, yeah, you know, 49ers. Yeah, you know, baseball. Woo, yeah, whoa, we just won. The moment I say this, oh, praise God. Oh, snap. No, that's bad. I'm like, I can say namaste and all this bull crap. That's not real, real religion. It's not a, it's not even just, it's just anyways, <laughs> you know, I could talk about how many girls I banged, 
You know, I could talk about all like this evil, evil stuff according to the Bible. I can curse people just like, yeah, yeah, curse, yeah, F that, yeah, man, F that. People, people rejoice. They just, they celebrate that. F that, you know, talk about how many beers I've drank, how high I can get or gotten. But with the Bible, it says those are evil. That's wrong. But the moment I start talking about Jesus, the moment I start talking about doing what's right, suddenly everyone doesn't want to hear it. They're like, oh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear this. Then they say you preaching to them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I want to live right. I want to be there for my kids and see them grow up. I want to teach them and make sure they don't drink and drive or end up in some orgy. I want to preserve their soul because the Bible says that he who doesn't believe in God nor follow in his ways they love death. My question is, this is to you. Do you like feeling pain? Like, do you willfully, I mean, some people are just, y'all just nuts. But do you like, do you want pain in your life? Like, do you willfully wake up and say, yeah, let me hurt myself. Because that's what you're saying when you're saying, I, I'm, I love alcohol. I need it every other day or every day. It's my source of happiness or marijuana or whatever your drug is or sex or whatever it is. I don't find my happiness in God. I don't even care about this God thing or this Jesus thing. My source of happiness is my income, my house, my possessions, how pretty I am. I tell you what, if we could take off everything, all one of, every one of those things and look at you for who you really are and look at your heart, turn you inside out, you'd be dirty, you'd be nasty, you'd be filthy. But God wants to give you a life that is really satisfying, eternally satisfying. where you could feel like a child every day. You see children when they're young, they're just so joyful all the time. They're like, yeah, life, yeah. And as you see when they get older, you see people just miserable. They're like, oh, just they don't like want to be in life anymore. The reason why is because they keep sinning. Yeah, a beer or two won't hurt you today. You know, eat as much sugar as you want, kids. Yeah, it ain't going to hurt you. Halloween, yeah, woo -hoo. Today, yeah, do whatever you want. Party and just keep sleeping with whoever you want. Do a bunch of drugs. Today it won't bother you. But if you look over the course of time, why, do you, why are you so depressed? Why did this person kill themselves? Why, what, what happened here? This person's gone crazy. Now they have this serious anger problem because of alcohol. The only way I see them happy is when they're drinking. Do you need to give a child beer to, for them to be happy? No. But we're so lost in the woods that we can't see the entire forest. We can't see the future of where we're leading our lives. We're leading it into destruction. Do you think your spouse is going to constantly put up with you cheating on him or her? Oh, if you've done it once, you've done it twice, they forgave you, they let it go. Or they really didn't and they're waiting to really, you know, I mean, crazy stuff happened. Turn on the news. Turn on the news. You'll find all this crazy stuff happening. What? So-and-so did that? Yeah, look it up. So-and-so did that, and now it's on television. And you think, oh, it can never happen to me. That's the most foolish thing ever. Here's another thing. I was curious to see how many people die in the United States yesterday, so I Googled it. I know it's probably not the most reliable source. 
But I'm pretty sure they know what they're talking about. Hopefully, most of the time. I have faith. But there's probably a lot of people who die every day. Google said that 7,400, give or take, people die every day. In the United States, that's not the entire world. It's just the United States. An average, I'm pretty sure it's higher during certain seasons and lower, but an average of 7,400 people, 7,400, which basically means that it said that's approximately one person every 12 seconds. Look at the time feed on this video. How many people died? Let me look at it here. 26. This 26 minutes it's been so far. How many people do you think died? That's insane. That could be any of us any time within 12 seconds. You could die every time there's 12 seconds. Someone you know could die. That's pretty intense. And it could be you within the United States. And you're going to risk your entire eternity not preparing for the next life? You didn't even know what was coming into this life. You didn't even know this life before you came into it. So I want to just kind of close out on a little bit. Hopefully start closing. There's this thing called Pascal's Wager. Pascal's or Pascal's Wager. It's basically like gambling. And I think it goes like this. I'm going to try my best not to butcher this. It's if I make a bet with you, right? And if I say, I think it's like dice or coins. I think it's a dice, like a dice. You know, a dice, you roll a dice and stuff. If I roll a dice and I say, if I can roll a seven, you owe me $10,000. But every time I don't roll a seven, I'll give you a dollar. Right? So the concept is, I'm trying my best. The concept is, if I never roll a seven a hundred times, you got a hundred bucks. But if I roll a seven once, you owe me $10,000. At first, you're like, sure, yeah, why not? You're never going to roll a seven. Right? Let's say I had two dice. Well, I think that's what you need anyways. But you could, we could get to like $5,000. I've never rolled a seven 5,000 times, but all I need to do is roll a seven once. Sit. Let's say you live your life and you go, okay, let me try this Jesus thing. What's the worst that happens if you die and, and there's nothing else on the other side? You're just like, oh, well, I lived a pretty good life. But what would happen if you never believed in God and you never even tried to live a good life and God is real and does exist and there is a hell? Well, you're losing out big time. That one chance of rolling a seven, that's what you're losing out on. You're saying, I'm willing, I'm willing to bet that you won't roll a seven. That's like, what's a what's dollar short of $10,999.99? No, not 99 cents, but you get the point. That's what you're saying. You're saying God doesn't exist. You can go ahead and roll as many times as you want, Jeremy, and preach to me, whatever. But I ain't going to hell because I don't believe in God. So I ain't going to go to hell. I ain't going to die. You could bring to me all the statistics in the world. Nope, not going to convince me. Well, I'll tell you what. 
I just got to roll a seven once. Here's the seven that I'm betting on. You're going to die. I'm going to die. We're all going to die. And if I'm right, I win big. But if you're wrong, you lose big. And I mean eternally big. Forever and ever big. Do you really want to gamble the one chance you have in this world? Betting on that there's no God. Oh, there's no God. Whatever. And life is just a coincidence. And it's what you make of it? Sure, go ahead. That's your choice. But what if he's real? And there's a day of judgment. And we either going to go enter into heaven with him or not. Do you want to bet your whole eternity on, on, on that chance? That's your choice. I try to stay under 30 minutes. And the sun just decided to disappear. Hopefully I did a pretty good job of that one. Yeah. Judgment Day, we're all sinners. Hands down, we are. But we're not going to be judged by our deeds. Those of you who think that you're entering, going to enter into heaven, you're not going to be judged by your deeds, by what you, by your, by your deeds being. Yes, you're going to be judged by what you did here, but it's not going to be weighed in the balance of whether you enter in or not. God will judge you for everything you did. That will happen, but He's not going to say, "Oh, you did more good than you did more evil." Come into heaven. The Bible doesn't say that. The Holy Bible doesn't say that. You may find that in another Bible, but you're not going to find it in the real word of God, Holy Bible. We're going to be simply judged by whether we were like David and like the woman with the issue of the blood who, were, who was bleeding for years or the man who was, had, who was lame and walked. We're going to be judged by that. Did you trust in Jesus? Was he your righteousness? Did you depend on him for everything? Or most things? Or did you depend on your own works? But God, I did a lot of things for you. And God will say, I never knew you. You did that for yourself. You didn't do that for me. I don't want people who think they're perfect in my kingdom. I want children in my kingdom who praise and glorify my name, Jesus. They glorify, I need you, God. Thank you, God. You're amazing, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, lifting up the name of Jesus more, 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 more. I don't need to be perfect because Jesus is perfect. following his spirit or are you the pharisee who's like but god i memorized the whole bible but god i've read every book in the entire world i know everything about everything i've done all these things that you your bible your word says and god will look you in the face and say you did that for yourself I don't need two Jesuses. I am one God. I don't need two, two perfect sons. I have one perfect son. And his name is Jesus. And the gift of salvation isn't what you did. It's what Jesus did on the cross. It isn't what you know. It's what Jesus did on the cross. He lived a perfect life, died a horrible death in exchange for your dirtiness. Nothing you offer me except 
thanking me for the gift of salvation that was provided for you, Jesus. Glorify the name of Jesus. Trust in the name of Jesus. That is the only people who will enter into heaven. Because everything else outside of thanking Jesus and praising Jesus and trusting Jesus is vanity and it's evil and it's not of me. Because that glorifies you. That is the biggest difference. Maybe you're that person. You think about that. You think about how much scripture you know. You try to make people seem like they're wrong all the time. You try to outsmart them. But you never lift up the name of Jesus. You never humbly bow before him and say, Lord, I'm, I'm just dirty like, like Peter. Lord, get away from me. You're holy. You're, you're perfect. You're divine. You're amazing. You're my righteousness. You're my salvation, my fortress, my shield. You're holy. You're amazing. Thank God for God. No, you thank God for you. It's all about you. Biggest difference is that. Lift up the name of Jesus above everything. Above yourself, above everyone. Above all the idolatry things that people worship. People worship all kinds of stuff in this world. But Jesus says, unless you lift up the name of Jesus above everything, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Because to, in order to lift up something, you have to bow down. You have to get on your knees. You have to crouch. You have to bend down to lift something up. And some of you religious people, you're lifting up yourself by standing on everybody else. Putting everybody else down so you can put yourself up on that pedestal thinking that you can see. And Jesus says you're blind because those who lift me up are humble. They're not ashamed to bow, to get on their knees. Those are children and they love me. But you, I never knew you. You proud, violent, angry, vain person. You are evil. Get on your knees. Pray and bow before the one who created all things. And his name is Jesus. Thank you for watching. God bless.